Okay, what's up everyone? So a, a quick few minute video about webhooks and Zapier. So what inspired this is that I had a, a client and I was brought in something out for them in Twitter Studio. And essentially I needed to be able to send something back to Zapier and it needed to be fully custom. And that's essentially what webhooks in Zapier allow you to do. And also just the concept of webhooks in general is super useful to know. So basically, the most simple definition of what a webhook is, is it's a publicly available uh, domain. So like a domain like that, zapier.com, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a domain and that's a, an URL. So a webhook basically is you create a an, an URL, an endpoint, a domain that's available for someone to send data to and you give it to Twilio or you give it to some other app and you basically say the data I need from you, you can send back to this endpoint and then I'll process it from my side. But it's really useful from Zapier's perspective. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to create one in Zapier and just show you what it does. So in Zapier terms, if you go to click new Zap, all you need to do is just, well, it's already there, but all you need to do if it's not there is just click webhooks. Zapier. So in this case, you have retrieve poll, which basically means you're telling Zapier to go make requests to another endpoint and try to get data back. So I don't quite like the definition Zapier uses for what a webhook is, because webhook, you're essentially like catching, if you know what I mean, that's like the concept of it, you're hooking into a data stream. But so there's this one where you have fetched data from somewhere else. There's one where you catch a hook. That's what I like. So basically all that means is you create an endpoint that someone can send data to you to the zap on Zapier and they can send whatever they want pretty much. So I'm just going to click catch hook new. I'm just going to show you how to use it as well quickly. Choose event. Yeah, catch hook. All right, there we go. So this should pop up after the first time. It gives you this custom link. Um, you can just say enable to respond with an empty body. So that means if the person who's sending you data isn't expecting anything back, you can click that. I'm just gonna quickly show you how to actually use this. So you go copy and I'm just using postman because postman's easy. And literally I just switched the, the method type to post. So you could do this from your command line. This could be coming from anywhere, from a script, from a project. I'm just using Postman because it's easy. I put in that link that Zapier gave me. In this case, say I was sending back data to Google Sheets. So this is the exact use case I needed. I needed to send data back from Twilio to use it to Google Sheets. And it's I, there's other ways I could have done it, but Zapier was the easiest. So this was the row in Google Sheets that I wanted to update or send the data back to and you can enter whatever fields you want. You can enter whatever fields you want at all. It's just, you have to go uh, massage that data and deal with it yourself once it comes in. And let's say, okay, response, let's change it to row two, response time today, but that would obviously be a real date. Just send that off. You get no response back, because let's say, give me no response. If you say continue, it should pop up to say test the trigger. There we go. Okay, actually I might have to run that again quickly because it's a different endpoint. So we just test the trigger quickly. There we go, get a success back. And there you see that row ID pops up, the response pops up exactly what I sent it. If I change it, I think I can rerun that if we really wanted to. Oh, there we go. Just quest B, so there, row five, etc. So that was literally a quick video. And from from that point, you can go do whatever you want. You could um, go find, do this at uh, Google Sheets. You could do uh, look up and update spreadsheet row and you could update a bunch of stuff. But that was a quick uh, introduction just to how you could use webhooks in Zapier. So to allow yourself to send back any custom data to Zapier and then do something with it. Um, and also just giving some clarity on what webhooks are in Zapier because I didn't think the, the explanation is necessarily the best, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. And for example, like I said, it allows you to send 
anything back from Twilio and you're good to go. So until next time, I'll see you guys.